Hi, it's Chester, Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a horizontal line within your Excel charts. This line represents a sales target, and if I change the sales target up here, 20,000, you can see it changes the position of the horizontal line. The second version is where you have different color columns for sales people that have met the target versus those who haven't at the moment the sales target is 70,000 any sales values below that are in blue above that in orange if I change this to 80,000 you can see it very clearly it's only Bernard who's met the sales target so that's quite a good technique in the third option I've got a scroll bar that adjusts the target value not only changing the position of the line within the chart, but it's obviously also changing the target in this cell here. So I'll show you how to include that scroll bar. The last one is where I'm gonna show you how to create a slightly different horizontal line. The difference between this one and the ones on the previous charts is that this line spans the entire width of the chart. If you look at the others, they don't quite do that. So if that bothers you, it'll be worth hanging around and watching the last part of the video. Okay, so let's have a go at the first chart, the simple chart. You will need obviously the data that you want to show in the chart, but you'll need an extra column, which I've called target. I've also got my target in this cell here. Now, whatever I type in here, I want to appear in all the cells in the target column. So I have to link the first cell to C3 and then lock it. I locked it with the F4 key. That puts the dollars in in front of the letter and the number in the cell address. If F4 doesn't work, just type the dollars in. The reason you need dollars is you need to lock the reference to this cell so that when you copy the formula down, all the formulas will always point at this cell. So I copy this down. If I went up here and changed this to 75,000, you can see that all of the cells now show that value. Okay, so I've got my data, I click anywhere in the data, go to the insert tab on my ribbon, recommended charts, then I go to all charts and combo. Now, my version of Excel does everything for me here, but if it hasn't quite got the same settings in your version, you need to have your sales series as a cluster column and your target series as a line. Click on OK, and I'll reposition the chart. Now we're pretty much there. If I change my target to 40,000, you can see that that line moves down. The line is picking up all the values in this column, which is the same values, which is why it is a straight line. Now you might want to make some aesthetic changes to your chart. For example, you might want to change the color of the column or the lines. Change the color of the columns, click on one of the columns and go up to the format tab on your ribbon, shape fill and change the color. For the line, you do the same thing, click on the line, but don't go to shape fill, go to shape outline and change the color. The other thing you might want to do is change the width of these columns, they're a bit skinny. To do that, right click on one of the columns, go to format data series and that will open up this pane on the right side of your screen and you can change your gap width if you decrease it it will increase the width of the columns i'll close that down i'm not a big fan of the grid line so what i'm going to do is go up to this plus button up here top right of the chart and i'm going to untick grid lines but i am going to show data labels now you have to be careful what you have selected here I only have the column selected, which means that when I click on data labels, I get data labels on all of the columns. But if I didn't have those columns selected, so if I just click into an empty area of the chart and I go up here and I choose data labels, you can see that it puts data labels on the line as well. So you definitely don't want to do that. Make sure you've got the columns selected and then go to data labels. Because I've got data labels, I don't think I really need the vertical axis here. So I can go to the sub menu for axis and untick primary vertical. The last thing to do would be to link this chart title to this cell. So whatever appears in this cell also appears in the chart title. 
And to do that, I've selected the chart title element. I go up to my formula bar, type in equals, and then click into the cell that contains this text. Press enter, and you can see I now get that text in the chart title. If I change this amount in the target cell, let's move it up to 80,000, you can see that this chart title automatically picks up that new value. Now let's see how this is actually achieved. If I double click in this cell, what I've done is I've done a bit of concatenation here. Concatenation is where you join things together. This is the first bit of text that I'm concatenating. January sales performance, open bracket. And text values always need to be enclosed within speech marks. Then I've got my ampersand character that joins things together. And I'm joining it with the value that's in C3. Now, the reason I've put C3 in the text function is so that it comes out formatted as currency. If not, it would just come out with the numbers 30000 without the comma and without the sterling symbol. That's quite a good technique there. And then I concatenate that with the word target, which you can see there. That's how that's worked. Okay, so we've completed our first chart. With the next chart, we want the columns to be different colors, depending on whether the salesperson has met or not met the target. And we have to create an additional column in our data. So I'll insert a column between sales and target. And I'll just call this met target, question mark. So what we want in this column is the sales values that have met the sales target. Otherwise, we want to return the NA error. The NA error is not plotted on a chart, so it's quite useful. Let's see how this looks. If this value here is greater than or equal to our sales target, and I need to fix my reference to that, then the value of true would be this value, the sales target. Otherwise, we want to return the NA error, and you can just use this function to do that, NA, open bracket, close bracket, close the bracket for if, press enter, and now if I copy this down, you can see that I only get one value that's met to the target, the rest are NAs. If I change this to 60,000, then obviously I'd get more sales values in this column, but I still have a few NAs. So this is the data I need for my chart. I click into it, I go to insert, recommended charts, all charts, combo. Again, it's cleverly done it for me in terms of choosing the correct chart type for my series, but I've got sales as clustered column, met target as clustered column and target as line. Click on okay. What we want to do is where we've got two columns, we want the orange column to be visible but the blue one to be hidden and to do this right click on any of the columns doesn't matter which one format data series and you should get this option on the right of your screen and the trick here is to use series overlap if i increase this to 100 percent the series overlap each other because the met target column is to the right of the sales column the met target column in our chart ends up on top of the sales target column I can also change my gap width while i'm here and then i can close this down so now if i change my target let's change it to seventy thousand. you can see it changes which columns appear as blue and which columns appear as orange i'm going to change the look of my line here if I right click on it, format data series, and then click on this little paint bucket here, one thing I can do is change the dash type. So let's choose that dash type there. And you can also change the color here as well. I guess we ought to link the chart title to our cell, same method as before, and get rid of the grid lines if I don't like them. I can show data labels and I can get rid of the vertical axis. You can see I've made a mistake there with showing the data labels on the target line. If that happens to you, just click somewhere on that line, go back up to your plus button and untick data labels, and it'll only take it off the line itself. Okay, with the next one, we're gonna use a scroll bar to change the target. I put a little gray box behind my chart here 
because I just think this helps with the aesthetics because the scroll bar is a separate element to the chart and I want to visually associate them with this border. You can pick up these shapes just by going to insert shape and using rectangles and things like that. Okay, I've got the same setup in terms of my data, except I have this extra element here, which I'll explain in a minute, manually set target. To get the scroll bar on your worksheet, you need to show the developer tab on your ribbon. And if that doesn't appear, it won't by default. Right click on an existing tab, go to customize the ribbon and tick this developer option here. On the developer tab, you need to go to the insert button and that's in the controls group. Ignore form controls. There is a scroll option in here, but it only allows a maximum value of 30,000. If you look at our chart, our maximum value here on our vertical axis is 90,000. So it's, it's not going to kind of work for us. So we're going to use the ActiveX control version of it. And here we have a scroll bar. So if I click on that, I can kind of roughly draw it on my chart or next to my chart. The size doesn't matter at this stage. Once it's on your sheet, right click on it and go to properties. And there's two things you need to change. One is the max value. And again, this has got to be the maximum value on your vertical axis scaling. We'll put that as 90,000. The other thing you need to do is link the output of this scroll bar to a particular cell in your sheet. And I'm going to say I want to output that value to cell C4. So I'm going to type C4 in there and then I'll close this down. Now to use the scroll bar, you have to come out of design mode. So back on your developer tab, this is a toggle button. You can see at the moment it's on. If I click on that, it turns it off. And now I'm going to use the scroll bar and you should see that it returns a value in that cell. If I'm at the top, it returns zero. If at the bottom, it returns 90,000. That's actually the inverse of what I want. I'd want the top to be associated with 90,000 and the bottom to be associated with zero. But we can sort that out by putting a little formula in here. If I say this is 90,000, so it has to be the maximum value on my vertical axis, minus this, so now, I move this up you can see that it increases the target and if I bring it down it decreases the target. We can kind of hide that by just formatting that number with a white font. So home tab font color white. We don't need it to be visible but it's doing a useful job for us. Now it would be nice to kind of sync the position of this control on the scroll bar with this line. The first thing to do is to move the scroll control right up to the top then on the developer tab go to design mode and just bring down the top of that scroll control until this rectangle here is in the same position as your target line then turn design mode off and scroll right down to the bottom go back to design mode and move that little rectangle up so it's in line with the base of the chart there and then you can just make some final adjustments to its position turn design mode off and now if you adjust the scroll the line should move with it which creates quite a nice visual effect now it might be nice to also offer the end user the option to type in a target so if i type in seventy thousand here i would want the target line to automatically change position now to achieve that, I can put a little if statement in here. I could say if C5 is blank, so empty text string, then perform this calculation. Otherwise return the value in C5. Close the bracket there. And now, because I've got 70,000 in there, it positions the line accordingly in my chart. But if I deleted this, it would then allow me to use the scroll to select the sales target. Okay, so that's chart with the scroll bar. One more example to show you. With our final example, we want a line that spans the whole width of the chart. And there's a totally different method for this. The first difference is that we don't need 
a target column as we had in our previous examples. So here are the steps to get that line. First of all, you select your chart, you go up to chart design, select data, and you click on add. Give the series a name so we can call it target. The series value is a single value. It's our sales targets. That's in C3. Click on OK. Click on OK. At the moment, your target series is displayed as a column. We need to display it as a scatter graph. To do that, go up to change chart type on chart design tab. Go to combo and you need to change your target series to be plotted as a scatter graph. Click on OK. Now, in my example, I actually undid some work that I did before, and I'm no longer overlapping these series. So I'm going to right click on one of those columns, Format Data Series, and I'm going to set my series overlap to 100%. At the moment, everyone's meeting their sales target because it's quite low. And now you can see my scatter graph point plotted on my graph. Now click on that point and we need to show an error bar for this data point. To do that, go up to your plus button, go to error bars, and then go to more options. In this task pane, we need to specify that the direction of the error bar is in the plus direction, not in the minus. We don't want a cap. And here you need to put a fixed value that will be different depending on your data. What you do is you count your data points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you put that number in there. Press enter, and you get your line. Now, it doesn't look right at the moment, but we are getting there. While I'm here, I'm gonna do a little bit of formatting. So I go to this paint bucket here. I'm gonna change the dash type. I'm gonna change the width, let's put in two and I'm going to change the color. Now if I click outside that line, you can see I still have that scatter graph data point there, and I want to get rid of that. So I click on it, then over here, I need to make sure I've got the paint bucket selected at the top. I go to marker here, marker options, and I say none. We've got a lot of white space over here, and the line is still not spanning the entire width of the chart, and that's really easy to sort out. Go back up to select data on chart design. Select the correct series, go to edit, and in the series X values, type 0.5. Click on OK, click on OK, and there we have it. The line spans the width of the chart, and obviously I can use the scroll bar to move it up and down. OK, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully you found it useful if you have. Please subscribe and I'll see you next video.